In a previous episode, I put together this courtyard for our playable keep. Today, we work on the first floor. So we're going to start with a couple of quick plans. We need to do a little bit of modifications. Uh, this tower section here needs to be trimmed a little bit. Uh, the sides are not quite going to line up, so just making a couple of notes for myself. Uh, this balcony area I want to raise up a little bit, so just do a quick note. Uh, the other balcony is also going to get raised, but that area is covered with black paint, so I'm not going to jot a note down there. Um, now, this balcony is going to raise up a little bit higher, and then the front steps here. I want to do some. I want to do some actual steps that kind of raise up to the actual front door. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the balconies and towers. So I used this uh, can to kind of be the basis for the size for the tower here. So I'm just using it as a guide to kind of trim away the sides to make sure everything is going to fit. So I'm going to attach bricks to the outside of this radius and that is going to be the diameter of the tower all the way up. Alright, so now for the balcony. I'm just going to attach a couple pieces of foam. I already drew out a uh, grid work for the balcony stones. Uh, now I did leave a little channel on the back end of it which is sized enough to put some bricks in. So that's going to just kind of be our guide. And now for this balcony off this side. Uh, I keep saying balcony, it's more of a walkway. Uh, but anyways, it's going to raise up a one or two extra pieces. I want this to be a little bit closer to being flush, just to kind of give a little bit of variance. Alright, so now we need to frame out the balconies and the walkways. And that's just going to be as simple as attach a little bit of hot glue to the bricks and then put them on, you know, just kind of in a simple repeating pattern. And I'm also going to take this time to kind of fit some bricks in, make sure that they uh, are the right height to make the walls for the adjoining areas. Now, I'm not going to make this too tall. I want characters to be able to easily see over it for playability, like their archers and things like that. Now, I've got three towers that I'm going to put together, and this is going to be the smallest one. Now the other two are going to be kind of on the outside of the perimeter of the mark for the tower, but this one is kind of on or inside the line, so it's a little bit smaller, so I'm building it freehand. The other two, which I do off camera, I put the uh, can that I use to determine the size inside of the area and then attach the bricks around the outside of the can and then very carefully removed it once the walls were at the height that I wanted. Now as you can see there are a lot of little gaps here that kind of need to have something done with them. Uh, you can leave them in but I took a couple pieces of brick and cut them into little wedges and then using a little bit of extra hot glue just kind of stuffed them in to kind of fill the gaps. Now, a few gaps I left open just to add a little bit of extra character, and I also kind of forgot about them until after filming was over. But uh, I think this works pretty well to kind of fill in the empty spaces that the gaps present while still giving a lot of character. Alright, so now let's move on to the front entrance. So I cut some foam pieces to size and then laid out a grid work on them. And this is going to be the foundation layer, and then after determining where I wanted the front door to be, I cut out another section that was a little bit smaller, and then another, and then another, and another, just to kind of create a little stair-step pattern. But this is still sized enough that I can put models on it and have it uh, fit appropriately. So then I moved on to the front wall. And this is as simple as just kind of 
laying in the wall where I want it. Um, I'm still maintaining that five blocks high to be roughly two and a half inches. Uh, I added in a little arrow slit on one side here, just to be kind of like a little archer's window. Maybe a character could stand behind it and get partial cover as they're firing down at someone approaching in the courtyard. If you play D&D, always remember, partial cover gives plus two to AC. And then for the doorway arch itself, I do a little bit of trimming to make sure everything fits kind of flush, and then just cut and attach a few barbecue skewers, and these weren't really precise, I just kind of eyeballed it to get everything into position. Now for the top of the arch, I do a double wide section. Uh, this is going to allow me to put a door in in a later video that kind of closes to a certain point. So now, let's go ahead and work on the floors. So, using some foam board, I just kind of lay it over the top of the walls and carefully start trimming things down to uh, fit the floor plan of the building. Now this was not a quick process, this was a whole lot of cutting, test fitting, cutting, test fitting. Uh, as you can see, the main section works, but the floor is a little raised in one area, so it's just a little bit of extra cutting before everything starts to fit flush. Then I laid out a one inch grid, and I decided instead of the just plain old squares, because this is an interior section, I was going to do like large paver stones. So, using the end of a pen, I draw out some stones in the grid. Now, here you're seeing me do uh, four stones in each of the grid spaces. I actually decided to start alternating three stones and then four stones in a uh, checkerboard pattern. And here's the main floor all finished. Now I did cut out this section to be removable so that we have easy access to the cellar underneath, but it all lines up uh, nice and flush with the rest of the floor so that we can still play on the main level. All right, so now let's get to ceiling and painting. Using a two to one mix of Mod Podge and pa black paint, I did a, a fairly thick coating over all of the walls. Uh, now I did extra Mod Podge just to kind of make it a little bit more runny to try and get it into as many of the crevices and nooks of the brickwork as I could. And then I used the same mix to do a light coating over all of the floor sections. This will give them a little bit more durability. And let's continue on with the floor and do a overbrushing of Artist Loft Gray. Uh, this is going to give a lot of nice little shadowed crevices and really highlight the uh, stone pavers that I drew in. And then I'm going to follow it up with a dry brush of Artist Loft Gray, but I'm only going to do it on every other tile. Uh, arbitrarily, I decided that any of the tiles that have three stones is going to get the neutral gray, just to kind of help accentuate the grid and make it a little bit more understandable that the grid is still there, but keeping the pavers intact. Then using some warm gray, I dry brushed over the remaining tiles. This gives it a little bit of a checkerboard appearance, but it's only subtly noticeable, but really gives a lot of extra life and definition to the floor pieces. Then going back to the walls, I did a fairly heavy overbrush of Artist Loft Gray once again onto all of the stone bricks. And once this dried, it actually gave it a really nice, almost uh, deep blue appearance, which I thought was actually pretty cool. Now between the undercoat and the overbrush, uh, it really helps to disguise all of the areas where I couldn't get the brush in to paint the green sections of the foam. And then I finished up the walls with a dry brushing of neutral gray. Uh, this was not easy to get to all of the nooks and crevices and some parts of the walls, so I just kind of did my best and took my time with it. And then I finished off the build by putting in all the floor sections. 
Now we do have a few gaps in between the doorways and some of the panels. Uh, those will get filled out with a few extra pieces of foam that get kind of textured but not really made into the full uh, massive paver pattern. And all of these are being held in place with just some tacky glue. That gives me a little bit of time to kind of slide them around and make sure everything lines up. Now the hard part was getting the large room section to slot into place and line up with everything else while still having the one floor section be removable. And once the floor is finished being tacked into place, the first floor of the keep is finished. Alright, so here it is in all of its glory, the first floor. Uh, we still have a bit to do on this, so that will have to come in the next video. In the next video, we're going to do a lot of detail work on both the courtyard and the first floor of the keep. Uh, we're going to start constructing a few doors to fit in place, some windows. Uh, we're going to fill any gaps that are around. I know there's a couple sections of the walls that uh, still need a little bit of touching up. And we're going to also do some torches, and I've definitely settled on a blacksmith for the courtyard. So make sure you come back next episode and check that out, because this episode is finished. Thank you everyone for watching. Please hit that like button, subscribe for future content, comment in the comment section, and we will see everyone next episode.